Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. So coming to you, going to go over some range results with the 270 Winchester from the other day. Remember this is, uh, these are, all these rounds are shot in my Tika T3X Super Light. And I'm gonna do a separate video on the scope that I have mounted on that rifle now. I've actually swapped it out and I'll go over all of that in a separate video, but I think it's in its final configuration and I'm pretty pumped about it. So. Yeah, just, yeah, stay tuned for that. I've got some uh, Johnny's Reloading Bench going right now in the background. Waiting on waiting on the latest video from him to drop. Can't wait to see what all he's got going on. But in the meantime, you guys are stuck with the, uh, the, the, the bargain bin version of reloading stuff on YouTube, which is this guy. So for 270 Winchester, I'm using... Sig Sig Sour Brass, which I will say that if you guys haven't tried Sig Brass yet, maybe you've got 270, 30 out 6, 223, 308, 300 blackout. I know they make pistol stuff as well, but their brass, it, it it's kind of in the in-between price point from like Starline to Lapua. It's it's from what I can tell, it's in between that price range. So it's more expensive than Starline less than Lapua, so, which of course everything now is pretty expensive. But if you can get your hands on this stuff, I have had nothing but success and good luck using this brass. Okay, I've used it in 270, 30-06, 308, 223, and 300 blackout. I've used it in all those cartridges. And I have, I have zero complaints about this stuff. Unlike Hornady, Winchester, um, Remington, you know, those brands that I've used before and have nothing but complaints about that. This stuff, Starline, Lapua, Alpha, Peterson, all those types of brass, I, nothing but good things to say about it. So just a little side note, but using six hour brass and then also Remington nine and a half large rifle primers, that's what I used uh, in these 30, 30 rounds. So I loaded up two different bullets to test using Winchester 760. That was the powder I wanted to try. Just, I had a pound on hand, just wanted to give it a shot. And I loaded up uh, five three-shot groups with each bullet. And the two bullets that I loaded and tested, one, the Nosler 130 grain ballistic tip, this guy, but it's not your standard ballistic tip. I'll tell you why in a second. And then the Hammer, Hammer Hunter 124 grain bullet, okay? I've had this box for a while. I loaded some of these up previously uh, when I had a different rifle and I tried them in that and they just, I didn't really explore too much with them because these are not cheap bullets. And so I didn't really want to waste them on that, on that uh, other rifle that I had. I think it was like a Savage 110, maybe something like that. I can't remember now for the life of me in 270. And so, but now that I have the Tika, Definitely something that I want to try and test in uh, with the Tika because the Tika is not going anywhere. That That's the, the rifle that my wife uh, killed her buck with. And then I also killed a doe with it. So it just, it, that thing is an amazing, amazing rifle. So on these, on these ballistic tips though, these are not just your standard ballistic tip that you can go out and buy off the shelf. Uh, these are the pull downs or the pulled ammo from AmericanReloading.com. So if you guys remember, go back, watch the video I did on that. I talked about how awesome the, the order was that I placed with those guys. I ended up ordering, I think it was a thousand of the 277 diameter, their premium mix that they sell. And I ordered a thousand, so I ordered two 500 packs and I ended up getting, it was like over 1100 bullets total in the 277 diameter. Well, the, a good portion of that ended up being Barnes bullets. So TSX and tip TSX, which I was, I was blown away. I ended up, it was like over 350 bullets, I think total between the two bullet types. So I was shocked. Couldn't believe I got that many Barnes bullets. So that was great. Cause I'm a huge fan of Barnes. And then on top of that, I ended up getting, I got 51 of these total. I know the bag says quantity 40, but that's because I went in and weight sorted these. I had 40 that were, 130 up to 130.5 grain. So that was kind of my range that I allowed. 
and then the rest of them were over that. The other 11 were over that. I put them in a separate bag. So these are all from one, 130 to 130.5 grains on, on the bullet weight. These are pulled bullets, but the pull marks on them, basically all you can see or all you can tell is that the bullet was seated in a case and that's it because there's no visible uh, right there, it's just very minimal pull marks on the bullet itself. So I wanted to try these out, see how they would shoot. Uh, I've shot <clears throat> several of the Barnes, the pulled uh, Barnes bullets that I got from those guys and they've shot great in, in the, in the Tika. So I wanted to, I wanted to see how these would shoot. And so when you go to Nosler's load data, their highest velocity powder is actually Winchester 760. So I was like, sweet, let me give that a shot. <clears throat> See how it shoots with some of these uh, pulled bullets and go from there. I don't have a ton of them, so I didn't wanna, you know, I didn't wanna go out and load up all 40 and, and test them. So that's why I only loaded 15 and I'm jumping in four tenths of a grain increments on our powder charges. I wanted to cover somewhat of a, a decent range on the powder charges. So started at 52.4 grains and I worked all the way up to 54 grains. That was the, that was where I stopped since that's their max charge. I just wanted to work up to that. Now they, they do tell you what's nice about the, the Nosler load data is they will tell you load density in terms of volume. So it's, it's not necessarily the best in terms, in terms of load density, only 88%, but I had a pound of this on hand. It was their highest velocity powder for this bullet weight class for Nosler. So I wanted to give it a shot and see how it did. And then for the hammer bullet, I went to Barnes. I went to their load data and hold on. I got to turn my suit down. So if you guys just watch this video, I need to turn it down to low. Just kind of let it go. This is some taco soup. Oh, look at that some taco soup that I made with uh, some ground deer meat, but yeah. So turn that down to low and just kind of let it simmer for a while. That, that's for a potluck that I got coming up in a couple of days. Soups always taste better when you let them sit overnight, by the way, in my opinion. But for the hammer bullet, since it is a solid copper bullet, I wanted to go and look at some Barnes low data to see, you know, kind of get a good understanding of you know, maybe a range, a, a charge weight range that I can operate in and feel somewhat safe about, right? Well, I actually looked at the Barnes load data online. So if you go online, Barnes, that's, that's another great thing, Nosler, Barnes, Spear, they all have their load data online. You can go pull it up along with Hodgson. You can always go pull theirs up as well. Ramshot, they've got, their, their manual is still PDF format online. You can go look at it, even though they've been acquired by Hodgson. Um, so online, I, I will... I will say that online, when you go and look at this, you know, they have, so I was looking at their 130 grain bullets, just to caveat this. This is 124 grain bullets, so slightly lighter bullet. But when you go and you look, okay, they got 120 grain. This is in their manual, so I'll tell you the difference here in a minute. But you look at their 120 versus their 130, right? So we're somewhere almost in, right in between, right? Dead center in between these two. For Winchester 760, for their lighter bullet, they go up to 57 grains. For their heavier 130s, they go up to 55. Okay, so somewhere in between, right? Logic would tell you, hey, 56, maybe somewhere in that range. Now this is based on the manual, which I did not look at when I was developing this load data uh, on what to test. I went and looked online, apparently, and this is, let's see, this is, yeah, reloading manual number four of the barns. When you look at their online data, it is different. It is actually lower. This I think is like maybe 53.5 for their 130 grain bullets. I think their Winchester 760, their, their data has been uh, changed when you go and look at their website. So I went and looked online, saw that it was uh, whatever it was, 53.5 or 54, it was, it was some, something like that. It wasn't 55. So saw that and that was kind of how I determined the, the data. And since it was kind of 
within the same range as the, the Nosler ballistic tip, I just loaded up the same, the same charge weights for both bullets. And they're actually loaded to the same cartridge overall length, which when you say that you're like, yeah, but I thought solid copper bullets were so much longer than your standard lead core bullets. And so then that impacts your pressures because now you, you know, you've got more bullets sitting down into the case and all that. Well, in, in this particular case, You can see, I mean, trying to get these guys lined up. It's not the easiest thing to do, but they're they're almost identical in terms of overall length on the on the bullet here. So, uh, what I did, plus this one has a cantilever, which doesn't allow you to load. All right, you can. I guess you can load this long, but in the manual it. It calls for 3.320. Well, when you load this thing to 3.320, I mean, the, the mouth of the case is like down here. So you got this cantilever sticking up above the mouth of the case, which just looks goofy. If you have a cantilever on a bullet, typically you want to try to be able to line that up, or just aesthetics. And yeah, so I saw that and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see if I can seat it. You know, how deeply do I need to seat it to, to have good alignment with the cantilever? And the the seating depth that I ended up with was 3.250, so we're 70 thousandths shorter than the Nosler data, which again could cause issues with pressure, especially since I'm working up to the max charge that they have listed in their load data. Not always the smartest thing to do. So if you get too if you get too close to the lands uh, when you're loading, you can you can jam the bullet into the lands initially and your pressures can spike supposedly right this is stuff that's that's discussed on the interwebs supposedly that can happen that can spike your pressure so you either want to be or you either want to be jammed into it or you want to be back off of it right you don't want to be right up close to the lands but not jammed in just due to that from what i understand right could be wrong but so i don't want to be jammed into it and this is the recommended overall length but can't well not that I can't load to that but it just looks goofy if I load to that so I seated it deeper which can also cause issues because now I'm eating up case capacity right by seating the bullet deeper into the case which also can have an adverse effect on pressure so I did go into this somewhat cautious just so everyone's aware but this is basically what 3.25 looks like so it's really good cantilever alignment with these bullets now, if I have, and I do have a box of just the, the regular 130 without the cantilever, and I would probably load those more or less to the manual uh, overall length, right? So there's that, you know, just wanted to reference some, some data for the hammer bullets, make sure I wasn't going to blow my face off. I felt confident doing that. And plus this is a Tika T3X super light. So a, a very much a brand new, you know, newly manufactured rifle. If, if I was going to go shoot something that was, you know, 50 years old, 60 years old, right, in terms of a, a rifle, then I'm probably not going to be working up super hot loads right off the bat. So, hang on, i got to drink my coffee. Oh, that's good stuff. So now to the results portion. I mean, I guess I can show you. Um, these are the hammer loads really no signs of pressure on the hammer loads now on the nosler loads the the primers are very slightly i guess getting just a touch flatter than um they're just a touch flatter it's kind of hard to see on camera and pick up on camera but, but on the 54 grain load when I look just in person, look at the hammer versus the nozzler, the nozzler primers are just a touch flatter than the hammer, but nothing too crazy or nothing that would really worry me. So let's look at the results on this bottom row here. These are the, the nozzler ballistic tips and up top are the hammer bullets. And so I started off down here because like I said, I swapped over, put a different scope on this rifle. So I needed to, I needed to bore sight it, which that's a pretty good bore sight job if you ask me. That was at 100 yards. Um, 
looking through, you know, took the bolt out, looked through the barrel, and then lined it up with the scope, made an adjustment. And I was like, you know what? Looks like I'm pretty close. Let's send a few, see how it looks. So <clears throat> the first group, my point of aim was here, point of impact off to the left. This is with the Nosler. Uh, three shot groups on everything, like I mentioned. Came in just under two inches, so obviously not great. Uh, not great performance there. That was with the 52.4 grain charge. And then from there, we jumped up. 52.8 came in under an inch. 53.2, just over an inch. 53.6, opened back up 1.71 and then 54, 1.614. So nothing stellar. I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't extremely ugly, um, especially considering these are pulled bullets, right? Pulled bullets, we're not loading to the manual length because they have a cantilever, we're seating them deeper. So there, there are a couple of things there that maybe we could play around with overall length. And, you know, of course, with it having a cantilever, we can't really load it out too long. We could, it would just look goofy. Uh, which is fine as long as it shoots good who cares how it looks but so there's that there's the nozzlers and then i transitioned started shooting the hammer bullets and these things shot really well in in my opinion again for a, a thin sporter barrel on that hunting rifle you know it does it heats up after three shots so typically i'll just I'll sh that's why another reason why i like to load in three shot groups and if this thing would shoot, you know, two inch groups, then I know, hey, it's just not a good bullet, good bullet powder combination for this particular rifle and maybe you find a different charge weight range to operate in or to go test in. But these, in my opinion, definitely good enough to hit the deer woods with any of these loads. I could load up anything 52.4 uh, up to 54 grains and just go hit the deer woods tomorrow and be perfectly fine. Now, of course I can't because it's not deer season anymore, but you know what I mean. So 52.4 came in just under an inch, um, just under nine tenths of an inch, and then 52.8, just under an inch. 53.2, just over an inch, same thing for 53.6. And then 54 tightened up uh, under a half inch, which kind of looking at this, that I would say that's more of an oddball. Uh, I, I would just say generally this powder bullet combination in this charge weight range in my rifle with the SIG brass and the Remington primer, you know, I'm gonna shoot anywhere from, uh, you know, probably just north of three quarters of an inch up to just over an inch, right? In this particular charge weight range. I'll just load those up, pick a charge, load them up, and go test them on some game because I don't have, a ton of these guys left, right? So I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time and, and additional components on testing these. So what I'm gonna do is just pick a charge, and I don't have a ton of this stuff left either. Pick a charge, load up the, the rest of these. I'd like to leave myself maybe maybe 10 or so. Let's see how many do I have actually. That'd be less than that probably, yeah. I'll probably end up leaving myself maybe five to hunt with because I do want to get some velocity information on these. Since I I noticed this this manual had higher uh, a, a higher charge weight range than what their online data had, I don't necessarily know where I'm at velocity wise. Probably I would say probably about three thousand feet per second, which with a hundred twenty four grain bullet and a two seventy, you could definitely push this much higher. But again, three thousand feet per second. Hopefully that's what we're hitting with solid copper bullet that's meant to expand, fragment, and continue on uh, to, to have good penetration because this thing will will definitely shed some weight uh, when it's coming through, but the, the shank should stay mostly intact and be able to have decent penetration, but you're also going to have some good uh, expansion as well. And that's going to be an awesome bullet, I believe, uh, on whitetail deer. So... Oh man, I think that's where we're gonna leave it. So that's pretty much it. Really good range results. Like I, like I said in the beginning of the video, I will have a separate video talking about the scope that is now on the rifle, why I went with that scope, why I'm going to transition to that scope only for my hunting setups and yeah. So I'll, I'll put all that in another video. But 
Don't forget, if you guys are looking for anything reloading wise, firearm related, you name it. And if you're, so if you're getting into, you want to shoot like precision stuff, you want to build your own rifle, or if you're getting into like the precision 22 stuff, Mr. Big Guns and Huntsville is, that should be your first stop in my opinion. They, they have done an amazing job of, you know, kind of developing relationships with the local competitive shooters, people that are big into reloading as well, and, and really kind of gearing their product selection toward those that, you know, what are people wanting to do, right? What are, what are, what is, what's the gear people want to buy? And, and they're getting it on their shelves. It's just, it's impressive. And it's amazing that a company, you know, a business would actually do that to actually listen to their customers instead of just offering the same thing over and over again, you know, and people were like, man, I really don't want, you know, brand X, Y, Z. I, what I really want is this. And Matt, he does a great job. He's like, okay, that's what people want. Cool. We'll go get it. And we'll, we'll stock it in the store. So it's just awesome that they do that. They take feedback, you know, from, from people locally and, and, try to incorporate that into everything that they offer. So I'm just, I'm grateful for that. He's, he, he does an amazing job. So you guys run down there, see them. They have an online store as well. Go check that out. I believe it's www.mrbigguns.com. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's where we're going to leave it, guys. Hope y'all enjoy it. Y'all stay tuned for, I'll probably do a follow-up video because I would like to load up some of these as well and get some velocity data for these because I'd like to load up um, some of these and the hammers and then I've already got some Barnes TSX and tip TSX loaded up. I'd just like to try all that on some, some game coming up in the fall, uh, coming up next winter. So that's where we're going to leave it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.